Have you ever known a narcissist? Narcissists can be some very, very difficult people to work with. They can be very difficult to live with. And if you've ever known a narcissist, you know, you know what it's like. Maybe you yourself are a narcissist. Maybe you don't know anything about narcissists. Hey, who's... Oh, this is one of the most uh, famous narcissists of all time, by the way. His name was Elliot Roger. We've learned a lot about him on this channel. He, uh, he even called himself the Supreme Gentleman, which ended up ended up becoming a huge a huge meme. And now there's like Supreme Gentleman merchandise that, that was released today, and the link is pinned below if you're interested in this sort of stuff. Um, but today we're going to be learning all about narcissists. We're going to be learning about how you can spot them, and uh, and I ain't kidding, brother. Let's get started. All right, let's check this out. We're on psychcentral.com and we're going to be learning all about the narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder. So the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder include a grandiose sense of importance, preoccupation with unlimited success, a belief that one is special and unique, exploitative of others, lack of empathy, arrogance, and jealousy of others. These symptoms can cause uh, significant distress in a person's life. Now, I'm going to be going back and forth between old, old Elliot here because he showed all of those. Those, that's like, that's why we learned so much about him on this channel. We've got like 50 videos learning about, all about, because you never want to live life like that. You never want to live life like that. It's, it's just not the way. Um, he thought he was, he thought he was better than everybody. He, unlimited success. He had these like fantasies about, about becoming a, you know, like a, like a dictator dude like really he, he wanted to he wanted to rule the world it was very arrogant yeah very jealous extremely jealous jealousy and envy you guys is not the way do not let jealousy and envy book part of your life just leave it out when i see someone with something that i want i'm like nice dude how'd you do that how'd you get that don't look at him and be like oh i should have that i deserve it more it's not the way baby don't do that okay narcissistic personality disorder is characterized by a long-standing pattern of grandiosity either in fantasy or actual behavior, an overwhelming need for admiration, and usually a complete lack of empathy toward others. Okay, okay, again, he is saying, uh, Elliot would say things in his vlogs like, they should be with me, I deserve it more. That's just not the right mentality to have, baby. If you're not getting what you want, you got it. You can find a way, baby, but don't just, don't just sulk in sorrow and L-D-A-R as they call it, lay down and rot. Don't do that, don't do that. Uh, people with this disorder often believe they are pri they are of primary importance in everybody's life or to anyone they meet. While this pattern of behavior may be appropriate for a king in 16th century England, you mean uh, British aristocracy? <laughs> um, it generally is generally considered inappropriate for most ordinary people today. Yeah, yeah. Gotta stay level-headed, right? Keep, keep, stay down, stay grounded, baby. You gotta stay grounded. Gotta be based. Hell yeah. Uh, people with narcissistic personality disorder often display snobbish, disdainful, or patronizing attitudes. For example, an individual with this disorder may complain about a clumsy waiter waiter's rudeness or stupidity or conclude a medical evaluation with a condescending evaluation of the physician. <laughs> Do you think that the Supreme Gentleman would have done that? Would he have been like, You dropped my food. You how clumsy of you. He would have wrote about it in his book, in his in his manifesto. He would have been like, This clumsy waitress dropped my Starbucks. <laughs> like, what would you do if that happened? I would just be, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, yeah, like, come on, dude, just be cool. Just be cool. <laughs> I I don't know. Just be cool. It's not hard. Just be cool. <laughs> don't be a snob. Oh, uh, what else? In layperson's terms, someone with this disorder may be described simply as a narcissist or someone with narcissism. Both of these terms generally refer to someone with narcissistic personality disorder. You ain't kidding? A personality disorder is an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates from the norm of the individual's culture. Ah. So does that mean that if you're not a uh, if you're not a narcissist, you're a normie? Cope. Hey, everyone who came to Copecast last night, thank you for being there. Copecast again tonight at 8 p.m. Central every night. Has what's up, Has? You're gonna be there. Copecast every night, 8 p.m. Central, baby. Live stream right here. We have a good time too. I'm thinking we might have to start calling ourselves the Cope Crew. Let me know in the comments. Should we start calling ourselves the Cope Crew? 
Hell yeah. Uh, the pattern is seen in two or more of the following areas. Cognition, effect, interpersonal functioning, or impulse control. They can be very impulsive, can't they? The enduring pattern is inflexible and pervasive across a broad range of personal and social situations. It typically leads to significant distress or impairment in social, work, and or uh, areas of functioning. The pattern is stable and of long duration, and its onset can be traced back to early adulthood or adolescence. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about that then. So the Supreme Gentleman, when did his narcissism begin? I mean, he wrote in there, he wrote in his, in his manifesto, he says that even when he was little, he felt like that. How did he get it? We're gonna, later on, we're gonna be seeing that you can get it from your parents. Like it can be passed down to you, kind of taught to you, like taught to you to put, put yourself above everybody else thinking that you're so special, that your fecal matter don't smell. But uh, I don't know where exactly he would have got it from. Where did he get it from? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out. Let's keep going here. In order for a person to be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, they must meet five or more of the following symptoms. They have a grandiose sense of self-importance, exaggerated achievements and talents, expect to be recognized as superior without commensurate achievements. Hmm, nice. Um, preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Oh, ideal love. Huh. Ideal love. Does that mean that a lot of the incels that we learn about might be narcissists? I think a bunch of the bad, the dark cells that we learn about, the bad incels, I think a bunch of them are narcissists. Ding! Unlimited power, brilliant success. Yeah, Elliot wanted to rule the world. He wanted to rule the world, man. Yeah. He was extremely narcissistic, dude. He's, where, are my, where are my sunglasses at? Oh, they're there. It's extremely narcissistic, man. Look at that. Nice. I, I love it. I love it. Let's keep going here. A belief that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. Ah. That's like when he when he was like a I had a job for two days, but I left it because it was underneath me. It was beneath me. I don't need to be working there. It's like, come on, we all gotta start at the bottom, baby. We all gotta start at the bottom. You think I enjoyed the time that I worked? You know what I did? I cleaned up this nasty place. It was a dry cleaner, but the people who worked there were nasty, man. Every time I had to clean the, the ladies' restroom, there's just blood everywhere. It was, oh, it was gross and it stunk. It was bad. But hey, I did it, baby. I worked there. I was the, I was the custodian, baby. I was a custodian. I did that for uh, about six months. That was one of the first jobs I had. You think I liked it? Heck no. But I did what I had to do. You gotta start at the bottom so you can build your way up. Hell yeah. Sounds like you ain't kidding, brother. Start at the bottom and just be humble. Be humble. Hell yeah. Um, requires excessive admir admiration. Admiration. He said something about that too. He said, I admire adoration. I, I should be, I did want your adoration. Yeah. A lot of folks want to be admired. Uh, you just always got to ask yourself, are they willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy and the work to get to the point where they actually do get admiration? Yeah, baby. You gotta work for it, babe. Things ain't just gonna be handed to you. That's another thing, though. I think whenever uh, you're growing up, right? And then whenever your mom and dad hand everything to you and you don't really have to work for anything, you don't do any chores and all that. I mean, everyone raises their kids differently. But I think that a lot of... <laughs> that move. I think a lot of times when you just give them everything, they don't have to work for anything. They don't learn about, you know, working and rewards and, and, and earning and, and character. It builds character. When your kid grows up and doesn't really have any character, they're gonna run into problems, baby. You gotta get character, baby. Character is so important. They don't teach you that in school either. It's, it's like something you develop on your own. It's like all these things in life, all the important things, they don't even teach you in school. They just, they don't teach you all these important skills in life. But that's, hey, you learn from the school of hard knocks, baby. That's why you can make the best grades in school sometimes, and guess what? It doesn't mean you're gonna end up going down a road that you're happy with. Uh, they exploit others. They take advantage of others to achieve their own ends. Did uh, did the Supreme Gentleman ever take advantage of anybody? I, I don't think he ever had the opportunity to. <laughs> if he had, he would have, though. He definitely would have. Yeah. Lacks empathy. They're unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. 
Hmm. Yeah, they don't care about people, huh? They don't they don't feel any empathy. They only care about themselves, and that's it. They don't care about anybody else. And that's not the way to be, baby. It's not the way to be. As a matter of fact, that's a sign of something like much, much bigger, much greater than just um, narcissism, right? If they, if if you're if you're unable to feel empathy for anybody else, then that's that's a sign of something much bigger that you want to get some sort of help with because that's not not that's not right. That's not right. Uh. I'm not knocking you, because I know someone like, like, I don't feel any sympathy for anybody. Are you talking to me? No, I'm, just, I'm just saying that, like, if if I was in that situation, I would... Uh, never mind. Somebody's going to try to find me and hurt me. Um, is, is obviously... Is often envious of others, or believes that others are envious of him or her. Huh. Ah, like in that when he was when he was on Teen Spot, was it? And he said, "You're just jealous of my beautiful cheekbones," but the truth is, he was jealous of them. So, yeah, that's projection too. That's projection. When someone feels something internally and then they shoot it out at you, and a lot of times when those mean incels show up and they start being mean to everyone here, uh, we all got to stay strong. Stay strong, baby. Don't let them get you down. <laughs> They're in there. <laughs> Don't let them get you down. But that's projection. Like they're very unhappy internally, and they shoot that out at whoever they can. Yeah. You roasty. Oh, I just, I just, I'll never understand, baby. I'll never understand it. Uh, they show arrogant and haughty behaviors or attitudes. Hell yeah, he can. Very arrogant. You might be arrogant too if you hail from British aristocracy. Because personality disorders. They describe long-standing and enduring patterns of behavior. They are most often diagnosed in adulthood. It is uncommon for them to be diagnosed in childhood or adolescence because a child or teen is under constant development, personality changes, and maturation. However, if it is diagnosed in a child or a teen, the features must have been present for at least one year. That's interesting because I bet you a bunch of the teenagers, I bet you a bunch of teenagers would have like a... In general, a lot of these tendencies, baby. Hell yeah. Maybe more so than adults. What do you think? I don't know. I just know when I was in high school, man, when I was in high school, a bunch of people that I went to high school with had these characteristics, man. A bunch of them. Yeah. But now that I'm an adult, the people I come into contact with an adult, you know, working and whatever I'm doing, I just, they're usually not as like this. I think it's probably a part of growing up. A lot of folks in high school probably go through the process of being a, uh, Little narcissists running around. Hell yeah. Narcissistic personality disorder is more prevalent in males than females and is thought to occur in around 6% of the general population, according to research. Oh, I'm not surprised to hear that. I'm not surprised to hear that because, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. There's probably lots of girls with it too. Hell yeah. I think I just associate it so strongly with the Supreme Gentleman. And like, like, I don't know. You would never see a girl doing those sorts of things that he did. You would never see a girl hanging out, you know, sipping the latte, re recording someone making out and being like, it's not fair, I deserve it more. If she did and she put that online, there'd be about a hundred guys trying to message her every day. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it didn't really work out for him that way though. Okay, uh, where were we at here? Like most personality disorders, it's, it typically will decrease in intensity with age with many people experiencing few of the most extreme symptoms by the time they are in their 40s or 50s. Hmm. All right. Now, how is it diagnosed? Oh, that's going to be good. Personality disorders, such as NPD, are typically diagnosed by a trained mental health professional, such as a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Family physicians and general practitioners are generally not trained or well-equipped to make this type of psychological diagnosis. So while you can initially consult a family physician about this problem, they should refer you to a mental health professional for diagnosis and treatment. There are no laboratory, blood, or genetic tests that are used to diagnose mental personali uh, personality disorder. <laughs> yeah, let me go get a blood test, see if I'm a narcissist. That, that brings us up to, did, did he, he did talk to, did he ever talk to a psychiatrist? I don't know, I don't know. I do know that in an interview, his dad had said that he was, um, he said he was high functioning Asperger's, I believe. That's what he said, that's what he said. Um, so I wonder who he talked to exactly, and if they ever considered diagnosing him as narcissistic personality disorder. 
because the Supreme Gentleman was a, extremely narcissistic. If, if I'm telling you, if you've got a playlist, I'll pin it below if you haven't, if you want to learn more about the Supreme Gentleman, since we're talking about all this stuff. That's what he called himself, the Supreme Gentleman. Uh, many people with this disorder don't seek out treatment. People with personality disorders in general do not often seek out treatment until the disorder starts to significantly interfere uh, or otherwise impact their life. Oh, it impacted his life already. Right. Oh, man. Damn. This most often happens when a person's coping, coping resources are stretched too thin to deal with stress or other life events. Cope. Copecast, baby. 8 p.m. Central. Every single night. Copecast. Come hang out tonight, baby. I'll see you there. We'll have fun. We have such fun on our live streams. Um, a diagnosis for narcissistic personality disorder is, uh, this whole time I've been saying narcissistic personality disorder, narcissistic personality, it's narcissistic personality disorder. English is crazy, dude. I prefer the other languages that I know how to speak. What languages do you know how to speak? Go ahead, ask me, ask me. I'll give you a heart. Um, okay, I gotta be honest, I don't know any other languages. I speak a little Spanish. I learned the bad words and stuff. A diagnosis for narcissistic personality disorder is made by a mental health professional comparing your symptoms and life history with those listed here. They will make a determination whether your symptoms meet the criteria necessary for a personality disorder diagnosis. Hi. Right. Interesting. Okay, causes. What about the causes? Researchers today don't know what causes this. There are many theories, however, about the possible causes of narcissistic personality disorder. Most professionals subscribe to a biopsychosocial model of causation. That is, the causes are likely due to biological and genetic factors, social factors, such as how a person interacts in their early development with their family and friends and other children. The psychological factors, the individual's personality and temperament, shaped by their environment and learning coping skills, cope, to deal with stress. This suggests that no single factor is responsible Rather, it is the complex and likely intertwined nature of all three factors that are important. Wow, so it's a combination. It's not just one thing. You've got several in there. So it's, yes, it's genetic. It can be passed down. Also, how they interact in their early development. And psychological, their personality. So it's a perfect combination. You get the perfect storm. Next thing you know, Supreme Gentleman. Now we know. If a person had this personality disorder, research suggests that there is a slightly increased risk for this dis disorder to be passed down to their children. While some of this has to do with genetics, some of it is also likely due to the child's personality as well as the parenting behavior of one or both of the parents. That's really interesting. So it can be passed down. If your mom or your dad was a narcissist, there's a good chance you might become one too. So you might as well get that under control. Hell yeah. Or else you have to live like that for a couple of years and then eventually hopefully start to get it under control. Hey, pound it for getting it under control. Cope. Treatment. Treatment of narcissistic personality disorder typically involves long-term psychotherapy with a therapist that has experience in treating this kind of personality disorder. Medications may also be prescribed to help with specific troubling and debilitating symptoms. Hmm. Maybe we can look into some... Uh, treatment options uh, in the future. I, I think that sounds like a good idea. Anybody narcissist out there? Let me know in the comments. Be like, yeah, Bay Shaman, I'm a narcissist. Or just say, I, I'm, I'm not a narcissist. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I invite you to join us tonight, 8 p.m. Central, every night. Copecast live. We have a good time. We have a great time. And hey, again, the link to this Supreme Gentleman merchandise is, is pinned below in the comments. It's all kinds of stuff. If you're Supreme, I know a lot of y'all are really into that sort of thing. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's there. Bye.